from MadeEveryday.com. Every house needs a bin or two or four, and I'm gonna show you how to make some. They're nice, sturdy, and they've got a little handle. Now what I love about these baskets, aside from the really cute fabric, is that they just look really professional and polished looking. If you gave this to a friend, I think they would be pretty impressed. And the secret to the baskets is the interfacing that we put inside. So here's what you need. Fabric for the outside and lining of your bin, stiff interfacing, felt, and material for your handles. First, let's talk about interfacing. Sometimes it's referred to as a stabilizer because that's kind of what it does. It attaches to your fabric and it kind of gives it more of a weight, which is awesome if you're making bags or we're doing these bins. And you can find it in all different weights, different types. There is sew-in interfacing, which you can just baste around your fabric and then sew it in place. But what I like best is this kind, which is fusible, and it has a shiny side, and that's where little bits of the glue is that you then press onto your fabric, it adheres, and then you can use it that way. Now typically on garments, you will wanna use an interfacing that's just a little bit more lightweight, such as this one here, which is great for a waistband or a collar. Just refer to your pattern and it will tell you what kind to use. I've designed this pattern specifically for a sturdy or stiff interfacing. And what I am using is Pellen Brand Decor Bond number 809. It's awesome. And it can feel a little overwhelming at the store sometimes when you see this wall of interfacing. So if you're not sure exactly what you're looking for, ask someone to help you and you can figure it all out. Okay, here's how it works over here. I've already cut out a piece of fabric to show you. Now you can do this a few different ways. You can attach your interfacing to your fabric and then cut out your little piece, say you're cutting out a heart or a shape or whatever. Or you could cut out your specific shape then press on your fabric and cut it out. Just do whatever works for you. I've got the shiny side down here. I'm taking my iron and you know, always read the instructions on your specific interface and so you know what to do. Mine recommends that you press it for 10 to 15 seconds and just move it slowly like this. And what you wanna do is to start in the middle and work your way out so you don't end up with any bubbles in the middle. So I'm going like this. I'm pulling it this direction. And sometimes when you buy the interfacing at the store, it might have some creases or just even some wrinkles in it. Don't worry, those will come out as you press it. And if your iron has steam, some of these we recommend on the instructions here to use steam. You could spritz it with a little bit of water. Just make sure it gets all the way to those edges. And if you'd prefer, you can just press it a little bit and fold over and do it on your fabric side so that you make sure it's really nice and smooth. And then you can see that our interfacing here has now become part of our fabric. So, I mean, I can peel it off if I made a mistake or something, but it's, it's bonded pretty well there. Okay, so now I would take this and cut out my pattern piece and then I'd be ready to sew. So now let's actually make a bin. You can make your bin any size. We are doing this size right here, but it's also fun to make them littler or taller or shorter and wider. This particular pattern you can find on my website, go to maineveryday.com, and it comes with a wide range of different sizes, which has specific dimensions, exactly how long your handle should be, et cetera, et cetera. If you wanna make this one with us though, what you need to do is cut out a 15 by 17 inch rectangle then cut out a four and a half by four and a half inch square from each corner. And I have just traced my pattern piece onto some cardstock because I use this so often that it's just nice to trace around and around and around. I do that often with patterns that I use frequently. And then I can also just fold it up and stick it in my drawer. <laughs> now let's prep your handle. I like using vinyl or faux leather, things like that, because it adds a really cool textural element to your basket, which is different than the soft fabric. And you can find so many cool things at the store. This is really neat. I don't even know fabric paper. I don't know, in blush. Blush, I love it, it's really cute. I'm gonna use this really fun oil cloth right here. I love using oil cloth. It's in this kind of faux bois, fake wood type of thing. And you can add one handle to your basket or you could add two. So cut out whatever you want. Now I've cut this two and one fourth inches wide. 
And then you're going to fold the sides under. And I'm using these favorite wonder clips that I love. Just like that, you can't really use an iron on oilcloth or it will melt. <laughs> so you just wanna kind of finger press it. And just do that in a few places, clipping it in place. You also don't wanna pin into oilcloth or vinyl because it leaves little marks behind. So I would just go like this, clip it in a few places, and then sew right down in your machine on both sides, it looks great. And if you need more information on sewing with vinyl, you can check out my other videos on my channel. Okay, when you're done with that, cut it six and three fourths inches long for this particular size we're using. And I've tried it other ways, and this seems to be the magic number. <laughs> okay, now let's work on our fabric for our bin. Start by cutting two pieces of interfacing from your decor bond stiff interfacing. Now I'm taking my pattern piece just so I can gauge how large of a piece I need to cut. So, and mine is folded in half, so I'm cutting two pieces at once. Okay, set this aside. Okay, now I have fabric for the outside of my basket and for the lining. So turn those so that the wrong sides are facing up. And you would take your interfacing pieces and oh, look at that, I forgot to cut the fold. Make sure that these are slightly smaller than your fabric, but still big enough for your pattern piece. Perfect. There you go. Again, shiny side is facing down onto the wrong side of the fabric. Just like I showed you before, press it with your iron, take your time, start from the middle, working out, make sure you don't have any bubbles. Do the same thing with your other fabric here. All of that, okay? Set those aside. And when you're done, it should look like this. This is all attached. And you know, this fabric that I'm using here is from my blush collection and it's really fun. I love this orangey fabric. Okay, you should have one of these for your outer and one for your lining. Then you're gonna take your pattern piece, take a pen. I like to actually trace it because I sometimes want to match it up perfectly with different parts of the pattern on the fabric. So. Center it exactly where you would like it. And if you're making a bunch of bins like I did, try to be consistent. If you have two of these tulip prints, make sure the tulips are both starting at the top, something like that. Okay, just use a fabric marker or a pen, trace all the way around. If you don't like tracing, you can just start cutting. If you wanna use a rotary cutter, do what works for you. Then you would cut out this all the way around. Okay, set that aside. And when you're done, you should have two pieces like this your outside fabric and your lining fabric, both with the interfacing on the inside. Okay, set the lining aside. And one more thing we're gonna add to the outside piece is a layer of felt. And this will just give it one more extra piece of structure to make it really nice and sturdy. So I'm just using normal felt that you get by the bolt from the fabric store. And I like to just hold my hand, cut around it. You can trace again if you want to. Do what works for you. Cut that all out and set that aside. And what you're left with is this sandwich with your felt on one side, like that, and the outside fabric with the interfacing attached on the other side. And then I use these little wonder clips to just kind of hold everything in place because we're going to press some of these edges under so I don't want things to shift yet. So grab your iron. That is our next step. And let's start with the lining first. I'm also gonna grab a ruler. This is another part that you wanna be very precise on. Actually, this whole project is kind of one of those precise projects, which is a little like not my norm. I'm kind of a make it work kind of girl, but with little bags and things like that, you really wanna pay attention to those details. Okay, we're going to press this under three fourths of an inch. There we go. And this is on the lining piece. Each of these edges just press like that. And this is another one of those things that really helps later on in the projects that you're not trying to figure out how to press something under three fourths of an inch when it's three dimensional. I love little shortcuts. There we go. It's funny, after you do one, it's your mind just naturally <laughs> folds it under three fourths of an inch. Okay, this one we're going to fold under only a half of an inch and I'm pressing it. I know that the felt is kind of shifting there a little bit, but you'll see what we do when we're done here. So let's measure a half of an inch here. Let's go up a little more. There we 
go. Okay, now set your iron aside, grab your scissors, and we are going to trim only the felt part right here. We're gonna trim down along this little crease. Leave the outer fabric just as it was and just cut these little extra pieces. This will make it less bulky when we're doing that final fold over hem. We are so almost ready to sew. Okay, we just need to put our handle in place. Let me grab my wonder clips. We're going to measure down about, I don't know, one and a half inches from the top. This can be wherever you want it to be, but one and a half inches is pretty good. We're gonna clip this, and you need to pay attention to, again, the direction of your fabric. I want the flowers, this is the top, the front of my basket. So that's where I'm placing this. One and a half inches. Clip that in place. And go to the other side and it's gonna kind of poke up a little bit. And I know it looks like it's sticking out a lot, but as we sew, it will kind of move down a little. Well, not move, but it will relax a little. Okay, one and a half inches, perfect. Shift that over. Okay, we have all of our pieces here, hooray! The outside piece, the lining piece, we are finally ready to go to our sewing machine. I'm just threading my machine here, and I love this automatic threading feature on my baby lock. And I'm using white thread just because that corresponds great with my fabric. Okay, we're all set there. Now the first thing we want to do is sew our handles in place. And if you were doing two handles, you would have added another one down at the other end. So, first come to our machine, take out that wonder clip, and I'm sewing really close to the edge. This is just kind of a basting holding stitch. About, I don't know, one eighth of an inch. Do a forward and back stitch. And I'm using my standard presser foot. Typically when I sew with vinyl or oil cloth, I use my Teflon foot, but this is just such a small amount that it's fine. Do it to the other side as well. Catch your threads. I love this automatic cutting feature. Okay, now we're ready to sew the sides of our bin. And that's what really gives this structure is sewing these corners up together. So take the first two, whichever first two you want, and fold them, and if we have done everything precisely, it should match up perfectly. The felt might not match up perfectly, but that is okay, because we just trimmed that down. Awesome, okay. I'm not even going to pin anything or, you know, clip anything, just go right back to your machine. And this is also important that you want to use a quarter inch seam allowance right here. Do a forward and back stitch. So all the way down till you get to kind of that diagonal fold. Do another back stitch, cut your threads, and then you can see right there, that's already creating our little corner, and the handle is concealed inside. I kind of love doing the handles this way because it looks really clean and polished. Okay, do this for all four sides of your outside of your bin. Okay, I just sewed my last corner here. Now let's turn it right side out. And I mean, already it's starting to look like a really cute bin. And you know, I love that the sewing part of this project comes together pretty quickly. It's mostly in the prep, which we already did. So, you know, good job. Okay, you really wanna stick your finger in and press those corners out really nicely. And then, as you can see, these little sides that we pressed under, I like to just fold those over right now. You could do this in the next step too, but I fold them over, put my clips on, and then when I stick my lining in, it's so easy, it's all ready to go. So clip around. Again, I really love these wonder clips. They do wonders. <laughs> okay, now we, that's all ready to go. Another thing I like to do is to kind of press the sides down like this and just kind of finger press it. That makes it just a little more square. Okay, there we go. Set this aside. Now let's grab our lining piece. We're going to do the same thing, except that this time we're going to use 3 8 inch seam allowance because it will just make it fit a little more snugly inside. Sew right down. Okay, my lining is done and ready. 
just like we did before, kind of box out all those corners, press it in on the sides, and then let's stick it right inside of our bin. And I know at first sometimes it seems like, oh my goodness, this lining looks too big for the bin. But as you press it in and wiggle it around, it should fit perfectly. Get all those corners down and kind of pull this. Sometimes it can get kind of folded so that you make sure all the pieces are precise. Okay, press this all in place. And if you find that as you're clipping this together that somehow your lining is a little too big, you can always just take the lining out, sew your seam allowance just slightly deeper and that will make it a little smaller. Okay, so now that we have our clips on here, I'm going to fold the lining part under and just clip it right there with the clip that's there. Do this all the way around. This is kind of the fun part. It's kind of like, oh, it worked. You know what? This is kind of like a math problem. You know when you're doing an algebra equation and you get to the end and you're like, oh my gosh, it worked. Like a puzzle kind of. That's what this type of sewing is like. Okay, there we go. This looks great. I'm gonna shift this around a little more over here. This side needs a little bit extra space. And you can see how, because we did a three-fourths, we fold it over on the lining, and a half inch on this side, it just lines up really nicely. All right, my friends, we are ready to sew this together, and then we're done. So go back to your machine. Okay, now this step can feel a little bulky and kind of awkward, so I'll do my best to show you what I'm doing here. You're going to use a quarter-inch seam allowance, and this is just gonna finish off the bin. So, I'm starting in the middle of one of the sides. Do a forward and back stitch. And remember that your thread color in your bobbin is going to show on the outside, so make sure you used a color that will look great with your fabric. Okay, just go around. And continue shifting this around as you go. Try not to smash it as much as you can. I'm smashing it because I'm trying to show you guys here. As you're getting to the seams where the outside and the lining pieces come together, just go really slow, and if you need to, you can adjust your speed control right up here. Or if you need to go especially slow, you can use your hand crank on the side and just manually turn the needle and make it go through slowly. So just work with your machine and make sure you don't break a needle or anything like that. Okay, there we go. Keep going around, removing your clips obviously as you go. Okay, we are getting near the end here. Do a back stitch. Glory moment, let's check it out. Let's reshape our little bin here. And oh my goodness, that is really cute and pretty amazing that we made this really professional looking thing. Let's see what all of our bins look like again together. Okay. Look at all these really fun baskets. Now, fill them on up with some supplies, my favorite bias tape. You can give this to a friend. You can fill it with some goodies. And you know, get everything in there. And there you go. Now go make 10 more. That's what I would do. For more ideas, you can check out my website, madeeveryday.com. And for all of your sewing machine needs, head to babylock.com where it's all for the love of sewing. I will see you guys next time. Bye.